Hi, people of the internet, and welcome to another edition of In the Mood to Scrap. I'm Vilna Furstenberg. Today's mood board is brought to you by Biochem P. She's a member of Two Piece in a Bucket, and I asked the on the general scrapbooking board if they would share some of their favorite mood boards. And this is one that she shared, and I absolutely loved it. I loved it because of all the little elements and the interesting things that's on it. And I thought it will translate amazingly as a scrapbook page. And in the end, I think it worked out perfectly and you can see 100% where the inspiration of this page come from, which is of course this beautiful board. So in starting, I put some product that reminded me of the mood board and you can see some bows and keys and I did some die cuts, um, acorns, feathers, the Eiffel Tower and I took photos, uh, I printed some pictures of my friend and I that went to Paris this past uh, fall and I thought it was a perfect opportunity to just make a page remembering that trip that we had. So. And of course I, I used the old book because the whole mood board is on the background of this old paper. So that was what I was thinking, um, just pulling the product from my stash. Right, so starting with <clears throat> making the background, of course, um, I'm just tearing some pages out of this book. And it's really an old book that I bought for a dollar or 50 cents at a thrift shop. So I'm just going to use three little pages and some Mod Podge and a brush. And I'll show you exactly how we're going to make the background. So start by layering some Mod Podge on your page. And I'm just using American Crafts um, heavyweight cardstock. With a brush you can see I'm just brushing it um, on the cardstock itself and then adding some more on top of the the book page and I'm tearing this piece off because I don't want that whitish border or the you know on the side I want it to look like it's one big page so I'm just really roughing it a little so don't be too concerned to make it too perfect and if, if you like using Mod Podge on pages, I have a whole chapter on working with Mod Podge in my first art class with two pieces in a bucket. And we do some fun things just using Mod Podge. And this is a wonderful, wonderful medium to use. It's acid free and it's just lovely. So you want to let it dry. And once it dry, we're going to work on it. But in the meantime, I want to emboss the little... Um, Eiffel Tower that I die cut with my silhouette. I'm just going to zoom in on that. And you can see how beautiful it is. I just love that little flourish uh, attached to the Eiffel Tower. And on the mood board, there's a silver glitter Eiffel Tower. So I was thinking maybe I should just emboss this one with silver embossing powder. And I actually did it twice and I love the result. I just used my fingers to dab it into the little pad because sometimes your fingers are just the easiest tools to use, period. Because you can just clean them and you know exactly where to touch, you know. So, and sprinkling on the powder, and now I'm just going to heat it up. And you can see how I'm holding it down with a little craft stick because otherwise it's just going to fly off. And you can also see that. My embossing pad was probably a little dry, so I didn't, it didn't take everywhere on the, um, on the image. So that's why I actually just dabbed it in again, and I sprinkled some powder on again, and I heat it up, and that's when it just made that beautiful, almost a three-dimensional look um, with the embossing powder. So here you can see how it looks. Um, like I said, I did give it another coat. And then I did basically the same with the acorns. I just wanted to emboss it with white, but I only had this shiny white. And I used a newer embossing pad. So this time it worked perfectly. 
So I'm just showing you, uh, I'm just forwarding it a little, um, sprinkling on the white and then just heating it up. You can see I'm using a little plier to hold it. Is it a plier or pliers? Whatever. Um, I'll look it up. But so I'm just holding it down. Otherwise, again, because it's such a small piece of paper, it will just fly away. So just hold it and emboss it. So once you're done, we're going to start working on our page. You can see my Mod Podge is dry. And I'm using this uh, little thread, a piece of thread by DIY Shop. Um, crate paper, I think, makes it. And we're going to just use our tiny attacher and staple it. So someone on the message board asked, why should I get a tiny attacher? And, and I just wanted to jump up and down and like, me, me, pick me, pick me, because that little thing is amazing and I use it all the time. And why I love it is because you can staple thread with it because and it doesn't pull through the the staple you know if you use a bigger staple then it doesn't hold it so well because but because this tiny the tiny attaches staples are so small it just holds a piece of thread like this perfectly you can see that i just stapled it twice just to make double sure that it stays and i'm just stapling it and the top third of the page and now I'm going to start embellishing and what I want to do is I want my embellishments to hang from that piece of thread exactly like um, it was in the in the mood board but when I looked at it right now I thought you know what I really have to push back that background it's too harsh it's too it's not soft enough so I was thinking, what can I do? And I came up with a Heidi Swap mask and I decided to use that. So this is a 12 by 12 inch mask. And it reminds me of the page that I made in February for Valentine for In The Mood To Scrap, all those hearts. But um, I decided to use this mask and just spray white on top of it. So I used um, the Heidi Swap uh, white mist and um, it's actually called color shine and this is the white one and it ha really has a little sheer shine to it so you can see I'm just spraying it really lavishly I have an old box that I used to spray in so I just placed it in there and you can see I'm not spaced with it and I love the fact that the background is still showing through so it's it's kind of opaque the mist is kind of opaque so I'm lifting it up and I think because, not, not think, I know, because I sprayed so much ink, um, the heart started to flow a little, but that's okay. And another reason why it did that is because it's on Mod Podge. So the Mod Podge sealed the page, so the, the paint is literally just lying on top of it, so it can flow easily. There wasn't anything that draws it into the paper. But that's okay because my focus is not really on the hearts or on the pattern. It was just to add that little bit of softness to the background. So you want to let this dry and then we're going to add our embellishments. Right, I'm going to forward this like really quick. I wish I can work this quick in real life. But I just wanted to stretch out this Mod Podge slash um, misting paper because it, it buckled a little and I used a bunch of double-sided tape and I just put it on a white piece of cardstock just to stretch it out a little and now I'm going to start adding the embellishments so um, I had this just this craft type of string that I've had forever and I'm just taking little pieces of it and I'm going to use my tiny attacher and just just staple it together and I'm not going to adhere it to the paper background itself I'm just going to staple it like that almost like Christmas ornaments which is perfect because it's almost Christmas so you can actually make a page with w about Christmas with this idea and I want to let it slide because I'm not entirely sure of how and where I want it yet. You can see I attempted to make a little hole 
and then I just decided it's way easier just to staple it with the tiny attacher just two little staples and there you go and you can see it can slide up and down that little string and now the fun part really started because I wanted to embellish this in such a lavish way the feathers and I want to um, use a flower and you can see I'm taking out my Maggie Holmes chipboard sheet and for those of you who don't know me I love chipboard and I love these chipboard sheets and what I'm going to do now is I have a little stocking like a nylon that I um, add some powder with too so I just made a little pouch of powder and I'm adding it to the back of this chipboard just to take away the stickiness because I'm not entirely sure where I want the flower to be. So that's a cool trick or tip for you. The bow is by Maggie Holmes, her flea market collection. So I'm just going to add it there because of the bow in the mood board. And really, if it wasn't for the mood board, I would never have thought to use a big bow like that on a page. And, and now, you know what, I just want it to grow. It's, it's almost like when you embroider on, on a piece of embroidery. This is what I call embroidery. You're just starting adding little things and taking them away to see what works, what doesn't work. And in the end, you know you have a very delicate page and that was what I was hoping so I'm gonna spray paint those feathers gold and I have a just a metallic spray paint in a can that I got from Walmart or somewhere and I'm just gonna dab it little spritzes of gold just because of the fumes so I want to use as little as possible so that's perfect for that. What I love about this spray paint is it really dries quickly. So you can also see on my page there I added this little frame by um, Heidi Swap. It's called um, Color Magic Pressed Paper Frames by Heidi Swap. And I think you're supposed to be coloring them, but I just adored the white. And again, on the mood board, there are these white frames, and I just wanted to use that. Right, next, I'm going to cut, um, add some dimensional qualities to the flower, and I'm using some acrylic paint. And I used this on an, another page that I will have up on YouTube at some stage. And I just thought, what a, what a good idea. So I'm taking a pink paint, uh, acrylic paint, and I'm just going to paint the flower. And you can see I'm not recoloring it. I'm just adding some impasto acrylic paint to the pink parts. That's all I'm doing. The dark pink parts, actually. And I'm really laying it on thick. So it's just a cool idea to add something really special to uh, existing embellishment. I added some of the green as well, but I didn't like that. So I wiped it off. But I'm not going to show it in the video. So you want that to dry and you can see how it just pops that beautiful pink and it is like a dark red pink um, paint. Right, so I'm gently speeding up the video now and I just wanted to show you how I'm finishing it. So I'm using um, this photo of Anneli and I and I'm adding it to the back of my frame and it just is a perfect fit the only thing that I did that I just wanted to kick myself in the shins for was I dropped a piece of um, hot glue on the on my face and then when I removed it it just took away the ink so that's not a good idea to so cover your photos and things when you work with hot media 
or hot glue and wet media. There you go. So lesson learned. So um, the clothes pins are by my um, dear Lizzie, Polka Dot Party. And I just thought they were beautiful to use um, in pinning some of the things um, to the string, the clothing line. Now you can see I'm adding a little bit of hot glue to the back and for some reason my hot glue gun wasn't functioning right. And now I'm just positioning my elements. And that flower is still a little wet so I was super careful not to get it on something or the paint. But I'm so totally useless with stuff like that. If it will get on something it will, it will with me. That's Murphy's Law. So I'm using a white pin to pin that one. And really um, you will see in the photograph um, of the page how pretty it looked. It's really beautiful, the, the actual colors. So the key, there's a key hanging in the mood board as well. And I just used this one by Tim Holtz and I'm just, just placing the flower away, not to get everything full of red and pink paint. Just tying it up and it's hanging. And my plan is to find a dimensional frame for this page and give it to my friend as a souvenir. So that's a very special gift. The little flare you can see there that says love is by two piece. It's a two piece exclusive. I just adore it. And I'm just looking for the perfect place to put it. So when I made the mess of the hot glue on my face, which you can't see yet, I think it's still coming. Um, I decided that either I have to reprint the photo, but I had a bunch of photos that, that I printed from Instagram that's making its way over to me. So I decided just to fix it in Photoshop for this page, for the, the what I'm uploading. And the actual photograph I'll replace when I get the, the photos that I ordered. This um, title, Best Moments, are by um, My Mind's Eye. And I loved the title. Uh, and I'm going to paint it white because of... Um, because I wanted to blend in with the page. Right, I'm just going to mount it to this background paper, also by Dear Lizzie. And I love that green. I just cut a couple of things off of it. And um, just adding a little hot glue. There you can see what a mess I made. So learn from my mistakes, please. And you can see how soft it is. That green bow, the, the polka dot bow, has a little mint green middle part and I think it just worked wonderful with the background and the mint in the background. You can see also that I painted my title white with uh, acrylic paint and now I'm just stitching around the edges um, of my page. Not exactly sure how I wanted to do that with the feather but in the end I just stitched through the feather. I love stitching around the edges of my pages. It just feels like it's a great finishing touch. And you know what? I started to sew on my on my pages because just to make sure that nothing falls off of it. You know, um, maybe I didn't use the right glue at some stage, but I always had some things come off. So now when I just sew through it, I believe that it will stay in place. You can see I almost wrecked that little bow but I fixed it. So now I just want to add my journaling and I'm writing a little note to Anneli. And you know what, I've said it m many many times and I'm going to say it again. 
is for me personally, journaling comes so easy when I just write something to someone. Um, you, the words comes easily for me and I know my page is done after I've finished my journaling and like I said in that Garden Girl blog hop video, um, to, my, to me it's just a decision that my page is done because one of the questions was when do you know that your pages are done and it's just like ah, I'm done. You can see how beautiful the paint dried on that dimensional flower and it really is just such a cool way to make your embellishments special. So thank you so much for watching this edition of In The Mood To Scrap. I hope you enjoyed all 20 minutes of it and I'll see you next week in another video that I'm working on this week. So have a wonderful week. Bye.